Hello and welcome to the Dead on Arrival podcast, presented by the Reverend Dr. Donald E. Dunnigan Sr. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I will not be silent. As long as I have breath, I will always worship you. As we begin our worship today, I had a vision of an experience that my neighbor invited me into her house. She had plants and she had a a night blooming plant. And it was late and it blooms once a year. And she said, "Um, come over. It's like 12 o'clock at at midnight. She says, come over. My, my next door neighbor. And we sat and we just watched it. And it took about an hour. But it started opening up. And you could see the different colors. It was like watching fireworks in slow motion. Just like this, just watching it. And I thought, when I came in today, that in the hour that we'll be here, our worship would be like that night blooming plant. And and our worship would just open up before God and our worship before him would, would cause him to look at Cornerstone and see the colors. One would just stream up as they thought about God's grace and his goodness. Maybe another one would pop out a nice bright color to praise God for his healing. Maybe someone else just popped out and thought about his mercy. You didn't even have to be here. He didn't allow what could have happened to happen. It's just his mercy. Then somebody else would just pop up and think about how he kept your mind when you thought you were going to just lose it and totally fall apart. All of my worship receive my worship Lord unto you. Y'all gonna have to behave because I can't see my notes. My allergies are acting up. Think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. Something on the inside just gets stirred up. My soul just cries out. My soul cries out. 
worship all of my worship all of it. <laughs> all of my worship my 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 yes God is good. We praise the Lord for his faithfulness. Isn't God faithful? Great is God's faithfulness. His goodness, his love and kindness, his tender mercy. Amen. Well, I'm just enjoying the worship today. We haven't finished blooming yet. <laughs> Amen. But all of us have a little role to play. All of us have a part. You are not here by accident. You are here because God has ordained your steps to be here on this day. We're going to ask God's blessing upon the word that it will help us to continue worshiping him. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. We ask that you would anoint the words that go forth, that they would accomplish the purpose that you have prepared them to be sent forth. Open our hearts, open our mind 
that we might be receptive to all that you are wanting to give us today. That it might serve to enhance the very quality of life that we live to bring glory to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture that was read in your hearing came from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And I was led to do a part two to going steady, to go steady. And by way of review, um, the message from last week was that the pace at which we live our lives is the pace that God has ordained for us to live our lives. You can't walk in someone else's pace. It may be the same pace as someone else, but you can't walk in their pace. You must walk in your pace. And your pace is connected to your purpose. We just witnessed worship. Blessings to you. We witnessed worship, and all of us were worshiping differently. According to our own pace. Some will do a holy dance, some may cry, some may shout, but you do it according to your purpose, and your purpose is linked to God's plan. I wanted to do a part two because in order to go steady from what Paul writes in the 58th verse, to be steadfast and unmovable, to be stead, stead, steady, steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, I want you to, if you're a note taker, take notes. I'm going to share some things with you. If you um, want, you can go back and just listen to the message over again. Um, because I may, depending on how the spirit is moving, go at a, a fast pace. But there are only two things that can either hinder or assist our progress as we are going steady. Just two, only two things. And you can decide which one of these two things will work best for you. It's your choice. If you are, let's say, heading towards school, or maybe uh, you're going toward adult life. Some of you are already in the adult life, the adult phase, stage of life. Some may be going toward family life, maybe um, heading towards single life. Um, it could be a career path. It could be thinking about launching a business or going into ministry. Some of you are considering retirement may have received news that illness is on the rise in your body. It could be that you are heading toward midnight. And I use that metaphorically because when the clock strikes 12 a.m., that means the previous day is done. And we know for sure that all of us are going to get to midnight. Mm -hmm. Some of you are thinking about that. Don't worry, you, midnight's coming. And so there are only two things that can, as I said before, assist or hinder our progress as we are going steady. 
And these two things are in the text. But I want to say before I get to the text that a casual reading of the text may not be sufficient to discern the two things that can either assist or hinder uh, what it is that can guide you in going forward. But I want to say that there is a life transforming revelation if you can grab these two things. And so I want you to listen. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached to you before. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. I pass on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins just as the scriptures said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day just as the scriptures said. See, if I were to ask you, what are the two things that surfaced in that verse, those four verses that will either assist or hinder our ability to live life at a steady pace, it would be difficult for you to probably guess what I'm looking for. But I'm going to try, because I could be wrong. And how many of you know that sometimes you can be wrong? What are the two things that showed up in the text? Let me hear. Christ died. Faith. What else? He rose. He died. He rose. He passed it on. It's the scripture. Anything else? All of that is good stuff. And you need to hold on to it because it will fit into what I'm about to share with you. There's two things. The first thing that I want to say to you that will either hinder or assist you in your progress to going steady is simply this. It is the past and the future. Did you hear that? In order to go steady, you must learn how to use the past and the future. Are you hearing? Let me say it again. In order to go steady, you must learn how to use the past and the future to create balance in the present. Are you with me? Now, if you learn how to use the past and the future in these three ways, you will always be able to go steady. Are you following? The first thing is that the past and the future can be used to enrich, to enhance or embellish the present. However, the past and the future can also be used as an impediment to get the most out of life that God intends for you to experience. Listen, he said, let me now remind you dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I what? The good news I preached. Preached is past tense. 
something happened in the past that has now allowed them to arrive at a place where they're not able to experience the greatness of the present. I preached something in the past, but somehow you have not allowed what was taking place in the past to enhance and to embellish the life that you are now living. Not only did he preach it in the past, but it says, you welcomed it then. You received it then, in the past. Watch this. And you still stand firm in it. In other words, what was done in the past, you are still standing firm in it. In other words, if you don't stand in what was done in the past in a way to enrich and enhance and embellish the present, you will find yourself falling. That's what he told him in chapter 10, verse 12. He says, if you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall because the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. You, 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 if you can get this, if you can get this, it is, listen to what he says in verse 2. It is this good news that saves you if you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believed something that was never true in the first place. Ah, oh, man, I said I would go slow. I'm just getting some stuff here. Listen, you believed, unless you believed something that was never true in the first place unless you believed something that was never true in the first place. Some of us are believing some stuff that was never true in the first place. It's some stuff in the past that was never really true in the first place, and now it is messing up where we are in the present because of the way we have managed what has taken place in the past. I, I, I need you to hear this. I passed on to you what was most important and what had also been passed on to me. Christ died for our sins, just as the scripture said. He was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was then, watched, seen by Peter and then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time, most of whom are still alive today, though some have have died. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. Last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. For I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. But whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and not without results for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles yet it was not I but God who was working through me by his grace. <sighs> I want to give you three key words. The first key word is the word yet. I want you to catch this in verse 10. He says, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me and notwithstanding results, for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles yet. Yet. Watch this past thing. Paul 
Paul said, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle because of my past. Uh, somebody's following me. So, so my past had me messed up. And I was locked into thinking that I'm bound in the present by what took place in the past. I can't really go steady because I was almost operating as my identity that was stuck in the past. I, I almost lost it because my life became useless and in vain because of my past. But then he goes on. He says, what, uh, let me see, in, in verse 9, for I am the least of the apostles. In fact, I'm not worthy to be called an apostle. So in other words, my past has got me down. After the way I persecuted the Lord. But whatever I am now, I was there, but something happened to me right now. I'm living in the present moment, going steady, and whatever I am. Now, listen, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me, and notwithstanding or without results, for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. I was down here. But when you see me now, it looks like I'm working harder than all of the other apostles. But then he introduces this word, yet. Yet is a transitive particle or a conjunction that is usually adversarial or adversative. And what I'm really saying is that on the one hand, I could be considered less than the apostles. But on the other hand, I could be considered more than the apostles. But yet, woo, the true reality is that whatever I am, ah, uh, Whatever I am, whether you think I'm higher or lower than any, whatever I am in the present, whatever I am today is not because of me. It is because of the grace of God that is working in me. Ah. Three words, yet, grace, and salvation. Yet. Grace and salvation. I preached this good news that you might be saved. I preached it in the past, but somehow you went back to grab the identity that you had in the past that's preventing you from going steady and flowing in the present because you were thinking about what somebody's going to say about what you used to be. Let me say this. This, this, is, this. this blows my mind. Because what Paul said about he wasn't worthy to be called an apostle. Watch this. Has nothing to do about God's desire to use him. Let, let me say it like this. What you are today is not at all an indication of what God wants you to be. Let, let me say, I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to say it this way. The changing moment in Paul's life had to do with grace. But it wasn't that God decided at one point in time in Paul's life to administer grace. Well, what I'm trying to tell you is that grace is always available to you by the mere fact that you are living today. Grace is fully available to you and to me. The only issue Paul had was that Paul was resisting the full intense flow of God's grace in his life. But the moment he stopped resisting the full flow of God's grace in his life, he was able to live in the present without being hindered by the past or by thinking too highly of himself for the future. Yeah. 
yet a brand new concept. <laughs> I used to be yet I'm in church today. I, I, I wasn't always in church. So I don't really think I should serve in a position that elevates people because I know what I used to be yet. The grace of God flowing freely and fully through my life can create and produce something that I never thought possible. I, I'm going to give you two, three. Here you go. I'm going to leave this with, with you. Grace moves us from darkness to light. From the darkness of our past to experience the divine light of salvation. What does that mean, Pastor? That means to know that I don't know what I think I know about who I am and to be willing to know all there is to be known about whom God said I am. That one was tough for me too, y'all. I said, what did I just say? That's what I said to myself when I said that. I said, I have to know that I don't know what I think I know about who I am. If I don't know that I don't know what I think I know about who I think I am, I may not be open to receive the revelation of who God said that I am. Does that make sense? So when I get stuck in my knowledge of who I think I am, it messes up my future because I'm so locked into what my past is, I cannot embrace my present, and when I can't embrace my present, it prevents me from flowing and growing and moving into the grace that God has ordained for my life. Do you know that your past and your future can prevent you from fully experiencing your present. Oh my God. If I lean too far into the past, I tilt to the left, and if I tilt too far to the right, I move toward my future. But if I go steady, I learn how to use my past and my present by using my memory and my imagination to enrich and to enhance and to embellish what God said I am. I, I, uh, I'm trying not to be too far out there, but I, I just want you to catch this. I want you to catch this. What Paul comes to the realization is that he has to press toward the mark of becoming what God said he could be. He realized that all that he was, all that he had accomplished, he said, I have to discard that. 
because my identity can be locked in what I was. And when my identity is locked in what I was, that then moves me toward my interest. And my interest is going to cause me to try to protect what I think I need to protect in order to maintain the identity that I think I have, but I don't really have. I'm not what I think I am because God has so much more for me to become, but I don't realize it yet because I'm protecting what I think I ought to be. Are y'all with me? Yeah, I didn't go out too far. <laughs> I'm trying to go somewhere. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to get us to understand that Paul realized that his identity was so much more than being a Jew. <sighs> Some of us get so stuck in this identity ah, of our ethnicity. Whew. We get stuck in our identity of our gender. Yeah, we get stuck in our identity of our status. And that's where Paul was. He was stuck in that place. How dare these people of the way come and try to teach something that's different than what I know to be the case. I know what it is to be a Jew. I know what it is to be righteous. I know what it is to keep the law. I know how to live holy. And because he had that as his identity, his interest was in protecting that. But something happened when he encountered the word yet. When he got to that word yet, all that word did was open up his spirit and allow the grace of God to flow through his spirit. And once the grace of God flowed through his spirit, it was Paul who said, there is no Greek. There is no Jew. There is no bond. There is no free. There is no male. There is no female. I understand now that the grace of God can make me be whatever God needs me to be to become a blooming nightingale for his glory. Whatever God calls me to be, that's what I will be in order to bring glory to God and bring somebody to the enlightenment of knowing who God is. I, I become all things to all people. When I'm with the Gentiles, I act like the Gentiles. I don't tell them they got to follow the law. When I'm with the Jews, I act like a Jew. I don't tell them they got to discard the law. When I'm with the weak, I become weak. When I'm with the strong, I become strong. When I'm with the wise, I become wise. It doesn't matter where I am. I am all things to all people in order that I might win some to Christ. <laughs> All on, oh God. I, that's enough. Can I do part two, three next week? I'm going to do part three next week. Y'all took some notes. Take some notes. Because I'm going to go somewhere. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to be here when we go to the next part. So, so we can hit the brakes. Right <laughs> Uh, yeah. 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 We'll do that. Amen. The past and the future, if you can manage them right. And let me give you this last thing. I'm, I'm going to tell you this last thing. It's not a point, this is just an illustration. So I was, I was praying. I said, well, Lord, how will I know if what I'm telling them is actually right? It's a tool. You, you can take this and it can be a tool. So I was praying. Literally, this is God's honest truth. I was, I was thinking I was on my way to get some fruit to the fruit store. And I had my car. I was driving. Got halfway there. My wife called. She said, babe, 
She said, did you leave the house yet? I said, yeah. She said, well, I got something in the car that I need. I said, now? She said, yeah, I need it now. And I thought to myself, ah, here's my moment. What happens if I apply this message that I'm going to share at this moment? I was, I was kind of worked up. I'm like, this is going to mess my timing up. It's going to mess up. I got to go all the way back and then come all the way back and then go all the way back. I'm thinking, like, this, this is messing me all up. I said, okay, I'm locked into the past. And I'm locked into the future. Because for me, in my mind, in the future, I'm supposed to arrive at a certain place at a certain time, which is now not going to happen. I said, now let me step back. I'm going to ask myself this question. What does this have to do with salvation? I said, I'm still going to be saved if I take her what she needs. Right? I'm not going to lose no salvation. And I just, <laughs> it's going to be all right. In that moment, listen to what I'm telling you. In that moment, all of the agitation, aggravation went away. I went right back to my happy moment because I chose to put it in perspective to embrace the moment that I was in right now, that I had a car, that I had a wife, that I had a life, that I could move, that I could go to the store, that there was a store, that it hadn't been bombed, that I could buy fruit, that the fruit could keep me, all of that. I missed all of that just to get upset for that one moment because I messed up putting my present and now my past and my future to interfere with what was going on in the moment. I got to the plan. I said, here you go, sweetie. Gave it to her and kept on going just as happy as I was before she called. All I'm trying to tell you, all I'm trying to tell you is all that stuff you get worked up over, you get worried about, it's because you are somewhere stuck in the future or in the past, and the future and the past is interfering with what God intends for you to experience by the full flow of his grace in the moment that you are in, in every single moment of your life. Because there is no past and there is no future. There's only now and that's all you got. And so if you get stuck in something that's in the future that doesn't exist or something that's in the past that's gone, you halfway crazy. That, that's, that's all I'm trying to if you just learn how to go steady don't tilt to the left into the past or to the right into the future just stay right there and let God's grace pour into you what he wants you to have in the moment, you'll be steady all day long. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. We upload our podcast every Sunday at 7 p.m. Thanks again and have a great day.